one of these days I'm going to figure out where this stool is squeaking at and fix it. So you guys don't think that it's my lower spine making all that noise. Maybe it is my lower spine making all that noise. Anyway, welcome to the great outdoors. I'm your host, Willie. Today we're gonna to touch on a question and, and get the answer out there on something that was asked about, oh man, I was some time back and I'm and I, sorry I wasn't ignoring you, but it just never never came up. You know, the, the answer to that question never came up and why. And uh, in order to answer your question, email you back, it would have been this huge elongated millions of paragraphs, phone book thickness that you wouldn't have read and said, man, I wish I'd have never asked it now. But we're going to have a video on it right now, just a kind of short video just to get it out there and let you understand why I do what I do. Okay, first off and foremost, I do a lot of things about affordability because for me, uh, it has a lot to do uh, with wanting to get the best I can get for the money I have. Okay, and we're talking about knives today. We're talking about uh, multi-tools, fixed blades, um, assisted opening, pocket knives kind of stuff, and what I carry and why I carry it. Now, the first thing that you actually asked about was uh, the multi-tool that I use and why I use a Leatherman, because in one of the episodes I mentioned that I was a Leatherman guy. And uh, I am. I am a Leatherman guy. I have been for a while. I used a Gerber for a while. There was a Gerber model that you pinched and it slid open. Um, I used that for a little while until I bent it and couldn't use it anymore, and I bent it uh, tightening something or trying to hold on to something while tightening. Anyway, it bent it and then it wouldn't slide anymore. And then at that point, I couldn't straighten it back out. I tried it and then it would just always hang up and get stuck. So um, I got away from Gerber. Not saying that Gerber doesn't make good stuff today. This was a long time ago. Um, and they do because I do own a lot of Gerber products, uh, more knives than anything. But um, as far as multi tools go, I'll show you. Here is my original, well, I don't want to say original, well, it's my original Leatherman, the first Leatherman I ever had. Came in the leather case, and back in that time frame, they just called it the Super Tool. Now, I used this thing, it was on my hip everywhere I went, because I was constantly working on cars, or I was fishing, or in some way, shape, or form, working on a small engine, like a lawnmower or something, and I needed this thing with me all the time. So if I didn't have it on me, it was in the glove box of whatever I was driving. This thing has been worked in so well, I mean, it is like, I mean, it is just, you remember those uh, Saturday morning Kung Fu Theater, what was those knives they used? I mean, this thing performs like whatever those, what, butterfly knife? I think that's what it was called. Well, this is a multi-tool. A multi-tool shouldn't perform like a butterfly knife. At least I don't think so. This one sure does. I could take on Godzilla with that thing right there. I'm not kidding. But anyway, I have long since retired this particular one because it, uh, it got very weak in the center section where the needle nose were at. And what happened was it got to where it wouldn't cut wire anymore. It would fold wire over and not cut it because it was very weak and flimsy in the middle. I got this from a, uh, a military man during Isabel, Hurricane Isabel. Take, go back how far that was because I think that was like 2001. And uh, he gave it to me because I helped him get his trampoline, his kid's trampoline, out of the next door neighbor's yard where the hurricane blew it over the fence into the next door neighbor's yard. And he walked up and handed me this before I left. Very nice and I appreciated him ever since. I appreciate our military very much. So I have retired this one and moved up to this guy here. Now, again, let's talk about that affordability thing. This is called the Leatherman Wave. Very good knife, very well made. I like this one because it's got the little places where you can hit it with your thumb and you can actually open it with just one finger and it locks into place, okay? That blade will lock into place. You can't knock that back down. It has a pinch spot on the side. 
you bring it back down. It has everything, Phillips head, flat head, scissors, file, saw, the whole nine yards. Now she's still stiff and brand new basically, but I have been using it for several years now. Okay, let's talk about the affordability part. I walked into Walmart, okay, looked in the knife case that they had there, which you can't help but do when you do it. Walmart always has a tendency, they even have a clearance aisle a lot of times, where they blow out stuff, where it's uh, things that might have been, oh, I don't know, a discontinued item or something maybe missing from it or whatever. They just have a discontinued section. Now, of course, knives like this aren't going to be in that section, but a lot of times when you walk through the sporting goods or you walk through these areas, they will have the yellow tags over top of the other tags. And that was one of these. They had put a sticker on the side of this thing. You couldn't even open it. They covered it completely with a sticker because they had lost the case. Now, the old cases were leather. New cases are this nylon with Velcro junk. I wish they'd have kept with the leather, but we all know why that happened, because of expense. Leather is expensive, nylon's not. Velcro, not. So, the case was missing, the sticker was stuck to the side, and I think this model had been discontinued, I'm not sure, they might still make it. I know that I looked it up, and this model right now, if you try to find it, is like 119 bucks. Now, you might find it cheaper elsewhere, but I paid $19 for this. $19, okay? It was the last one. I came home, I got some gooby gone, got the sticker off of it, and I went to one of my older buck knives. There's right in there. This is what you are gonna find on my side when I'm fishing. Why do I use this instead of the multi-purpose fishing pliers? Well, I tried the multi-purpose fishing pliers. Got some free from PC Fin, as a matter of fact. Struggle, um, and I say struggle. The case was a struggle. It had this little Velcro strap that held it in there, and every time you tried to get them back in, if you had a fish in your hand, and you're trying to get the pliers back in, you can't get them in, and the Velcro strap was in the way, and I was constantly having to flip it up and hold it out of the way to get the pliers back. And if you didn't use the Velcro strap, then the pliers are spring loaded and they open on their own. They would pop open and shoot out it out of the case and be hanging down around your kneecaps. It just was a nuisance. This I can get open with one hand while holding a fish, get the hook out, fold it back up with one hand, put it back in the pocket, and I'm done. That's all I needed, all I needed. And of course, yes, it was 19 bucks. Is that gonna happen to you every time? Are you gonna go out there and find something for $19 every time? No, you're not. But you're not going to if you don't look. You gotta look for these things. See, these bargains are out there. Um, a lot of the knives that I own, and I own a lot, just ask my wife. She'll say, why so many knives? Why? Well, a lot of times it's because I walk into a thrift store or a flea market or whatever, and you'll see people sometimes, they don't know what they have, or they don't know if they just throw a knife in with a bunch of other knives in a case and you go through them and then you'll find something like I found this Kershaw. Okay, this is the one I carry with me when I go to work. This goes to work with me pretty much every single day when I go to work. That's the knife that's in my pocket. Got the little clip. This is an all metal frame. Uh, this particular model is made in the USA. It is an assisted opening, spring loaded, assisted opening. No serrated edge. I do not like serrated edges. I find them to be fairly a pain because sharpening them is kind of useless. I like a straight blade where I can sharpen the whole blade and, and not sharpen part of the blade. It's just personal opinion. Let's remember, it's all personal opinion. That's it. A personal opinion and affordability. It's a opinion and money. It's financial. Because there are good knife companies out there that are family owned businesses and there's somebody in the garage with a fire going and an anvil and hammers and shaving and this, that. They're doing all kinds of stuff and they make really, really good knives. Really good, but there's also a really good price I can't afford. Maybe some of you can, if you can, more power to you. If that's the, the thing that you want, that's the blade you want, buy it. For me, I'm, I am not going to be who I am uh, when it comes down to the affordability stuff and tell you guys about affordable options and then try to do a review or opinion on a $350 or $500 knife I, because I couldn't walk out there and buy that. I wouldn't be able to walk out there and buy that. It's just not in my price range, it's not my world. So I have to get the most out of what money I have. So what I'm showing you is that, okay? 
So don't get me wrong, there's expensive knives out there and they're good, really good, but you're gonna pay for them. So I kind of dabble and stay, I, I know to stay in my lane, know your role. My role is right here. This is how I roll. So anyway, let's get back on. Um, there are knives that you're gonna walk out there and find, just like that Kershaw I was just showing you, seven bucks, I paid seven dollars for that one. And it's American made, Kershaw, I'm not sure what the model is or any of that stuff, but the main reason I liked it is because it's an all metal frame. There's no wooden handle or any plastic handle to scar and scratch up or whatever. It's all metal, so if it gets scratched or beat up, who cares? You know, it's, but it does what it's supposed to do. So, you get lucky like that sometimes. You get lucky when you walk into these places and you find stuff like that. One of your, I'm sure everybody has one close by, Walmart, okay? Now here's some of that Gerber stuff I was telling you about. Okay, I got this one Christmas. They were blowing these things out at Walmart. Comes with the saw. You can unscrew that little bolt right there and push the saw up. It comes for cutting limbs and branches and whatever for camping. A skeleton, skeleton it's a skeleton, uh, the frame is, you, you can see through it. Like a skeleton. Is it the super greatest knife that ever? No, it's not. None of this is. But they were blowing this stuff out at Walmart for $9.99. $9.99, okay, so I got it. It's good to have, it's useful. If I break it for $9.99, oh well. You can't even touch a Big Mac combo for $9.99 hardly anymore. So if I can get a couple of years or three or five out of this, that's fine. I bought three of them. I gave one to Lucas, because Lucas does a lot of hammock camping, and I gave one to Evan for whenever he decides he's gonna do some kind of camping or be outdoors, he'll have his own. Um, He's used, he's actually used the knife on several occasions. He works at a Christmas tree lot during Christmas and he cuts all the ropes off the Christmas trees with it every year. We sharpen it back up and he takes it back out there and uses it again. So does it do its job for $9.99? It does very well. But you gotta look, gotta be open to that kind of stuff. That's the kind of things you kind of see and you go, ooh. All right. Now, a company that I do use a lot, okay? I'm not, and I mean, I use them a lot. Buck. Now, we've heard buck knives for years and years and years to a point where we say buck knives and think that it's a type of knife as opposed to a company that makes knives. This is a company. Buck, B-U-C-K, company, knife company, is an actual company. Um, I've used buck for a long time because one of the very first pocket knives I ever bought was a buck folder. I forgot the model number, but I bought it and I had it for about, I don't know, a month, two months, whatever. I bought it back in the late 70s, 78, 79, and broke the blade. Well, back in that time frame, you know, it wasn't like we had YouTube or we had emails and internets and all that kind of stuff to be able to look this stuff up. I folded the thing up and threw it in a tackle box and never saw it again until about five years ago. I found it, got online, looked up that Buck would put a new blade in it for $10. I think you had to pay shipping yourself or something like that. And I shipped it to them, put a new blade in it. They buffed this thing out. The end pieces were made, were nickel and the center section was a walnut, I think, or whatever. They buffed this thing out, sent it back to me with a new blade. It looked better than the day I bought it. So again, I've been with Buck for a long time. I've used Bucks for a long time and that just floored me on how good that knife looked. And I, so I am still a Buck fan and a follower. Now, here's another one of the reasons that I follow them. This is a Buck 119 fixed blade knife. Now we've seen, anybody who knows knives has seen this knife for a very long, long time. This was my dad's, okay? We bought this knife for my dad. My dad hunted. He was an avid hunter. He would save up all of his vacation and he would use it all at one time in between November and December, and he hunted. That was his thing. We bought him this knife in the late 70s as a Christmas present. Now, this was his favorite, the old timer charade. Now, this was made back in the US back in the day. This was his favorite knife. It was very easy to sharpen, and he loved the curvature of the blade for skinning deer, rabbit, squirrel, whatever he was hunting. He loved this knife. So what ended up happening was I, when I first started hunting with him, he let me carry this one. And uh, so I remember on many occasions 
4 a.m. jumping up out of bed getting dressed and getting my warm clothes on and my belt I couldn't get my belt on fast enough because I wanted to get that on the side of it and carry it and I wanted to be the big man carrying this big buck knife with his dad going out in the woods hunting that's what this knife was all about so my father unfortunately has long since passed away and I wound up with the knives this one has been retired simply because it was my dad's he engraved his name and everything he was an engraver he was one of those people he had one of those and if you couldn't talk if you didn't have a voice and he wanted people to know that that was his whatever it was he would engrave his name in the side of it thank god i wasn't born deaf or and i could talk or whatever because i'm pretty sure right across my forehead would have been my dad's name so he engraved everything so this one's been retired i don't use it it's, it's more of a memory but i went to walmart and got my own 119. now 119 uh, at Walmart, you could buy this knife brand new back then for $47.99, and I did. I bought three, as a matter of fact. I think I gave one to Lucas and one to Evan, and I kept one. And uh, you could get them for $47.99, but now you try to go to Bass Pro Shops and get that knife, I think it's like 80 bucks, maybe more. I think you can get it as low as 75, but as I think what's happened is uh, Walmart has long since raised the price on these. So, but. You just can't beat them. The quality is still there. They're still made in the U.S. They are a little bit heavy. Don't get me wrong. They're a big, heavy, thick knife. But I like that with the, the tang. I think it's tang. Or is that something you drank during the 70s with the space people? I think it's called a tang. I'm not sure. Full tang. Maybe the tang is what goes through the handle. I'm not sure which. But anyway, this little guard that keeps your finger from sliding up the blade and stuff. I, I always like that and it just fits my hand good. I have short fat fingers and a fat hand and this knife fits it beautifully. Nice leather case, beautiful leather case. I'm not gonna lie to you, I have several versions of this knife. It's one of the only things that I actually, I guess you could say collect is knives, but I get good prices. I don't just jump on anything. Maybe I'm, again, it's about affordability. That's what this was. Got these for $47.99. So, do I have many other knives? I do. Um, on my daily carry around the house here, when I go out, whatever, I have this. This is a CRKT. You can't get this knife anymore. Assisted opening, nice blade, feels good. Got that nice grip to it. It feels very comfortable, very comfortable in the knife. It's a discontinued model. It's called the Natural uh, Crawford, Natural 2 is what it's called thrift store thrift store five bucks that's right and it had its big brother with it which had a bone handle yeah i got it for seven bucks do i have other knives i do i have a lot i have quite a few i have a couple that i collect this is a case this knife i don't know if i'd ever even take it in the woods because it's so pretty it's got a leather stacked handle <laughs> it's just a nice knife it was on sale they were blowing it out uh, it was a, a model that I, either they weren't selling anymore or something like that, so I went ahead and picked it up. So there's things like that, things like that. There's all kinds. I got SOG, different versions of SOG here. I've got Gerber, okay, different versions of Gerber. Another buck. I'm going to show you something, by the way. This is a learning experience. This is a lesson, okay? We can have this as a, a learning experience, a lesson, whatever you'll call it. Got your hard plastic sheaths, okay? These knives snap into place, all right? They snap into that thing, and that's so it doesn't fall out when you're out in the woods and you go to reach down and realize, hey, my knife's not there anymore. You know, the next thing you know, you're being eaten by a grizzly bear because your knife fell out of your pocket or your sheath or whatever. Okay, well, these snap into place. Don't ever grab and pull, okay? Because when you pull, I'm gonna show you real quick, it snaps out of place, and what happens is you're pulling so hard that you jerk and your hand jerks backwards. This very knife, cut me in the thumb because I pulled it out and it popped loose when I first got it. I mean, just got it. And I popped backwards and it hit me in the meat of my thumb right there. And I thought I was going to have to go get stitches, but thank goodness for super glue. But anyway, what you're supposed to do is when that snaps into place, you have a part right there that's got little edges on it, a grip for your thumb. You just take your thumb and push. Okay. 
It's that simple, people. To take your thumb and push. That is how these knives function. This is an, another US made uh, buck. I'm not sure what the model is. It's a 632, made in the US. Anyway, this was Walmart. Walmart was blowing these out. I ended up getting this one for about $18 because uh, they only had two left and they were getting rid of them and they weren't gonna sell them anymore. So there you go. I, that's, that's the basis of it all. What I carry, Leatherman's on my side pretty much most of the time. A Kershaw is what I carry back and forth to work. A CRKT is in my pocket when I'm around the house or going out somewhere. And when I'm in the woods with a fixed blade, it's usually gonna be this buck. That's, that's me. That's pretty much what I do. I also have a, a Gerber hatchet that I use when I'm camping. And uh, I, I would like to tell you that I use this all the time, but I really don't. Sometimes I will actually take my fixed blade and put it on a piece of wood and take another piece of wood and hammer it through it to split it or whatever. But this does come with me on occasions, but I don't, I don't particularly care. This is a Bear, Bear Grills, okay? Not to be confused with Bush Gardens or um, Ben Goldstein, but it is Bear Grills um, Gerber. I don't like this thing that it's in because it's very hard to get out and you can very easily cut yourself trying to get this out of the case. I, and I don't like that. So I'm very cautious about getting that in and out of its little unruly, I might even make a leather one myself because this, this thing's gonna cut somebody one of these days. So far I haven't been cut with it, but you know, you give a kid a knife, he's gonna get cut. Okay, one other thing I'm gonna talk about, we're gonna get out of it real quick and we're gonna go away from here, is uh, sharpeners. This is a Lansky sharpener. I use this sharpener on just about every knife that I own and uh, they're hard to find anymore. I ordered this on Amazon, I got two of them. I, used to, I use them until I break them all to pieces and then I get another one. It's a very good sharpener, has two, your, your metal section for making an edge, your uh, stone section for fine tuning that edge and then your other stone here that I kind of use on the edge to even fine tune it even more and then you have this little doodah here that unfolds that actually has metal stuck to it where I've been sharpening knives it's uh, got a magnet at the end and it's used for serrated edges some knives I do have serrated edges but this is what I use to sharpen my knives with and it does a great job I don't have any problem with that at all so there you go. That is not every knife I have by any means, because I do have a few. I ain't kidding. Got a lot. Uh, but uh, that's the ones that I use the most and what I use them for. So for those who asked, why a Leatherman? Why did you, why the Leatherman? Why? Well, you got more than you bargained for in this video. The Leatherman simply because I like them better. They work better for me. Uh, again, not saying that Gerber doesn't make a good one, but that's why these things are opinions. It's my opinion, it's what I use. You need to do your homework, go out there, take a listen to what I said, and then go make your own decision. Experiment, play around with, use, see what you like and don't like. But that's what I do. Hope you enjoyed this video. It was very quick, very sporadic and right to the point and why, but uh, it was a question that I was asked and I really hate not answering. Uh, I try to answer every single solitary person I can, whether you send me an email or whether you put a comment on, on the, on the uh, video or whatever, I try to answer every single person as quickly as I can. So thank you guys for watching. We'll see you on the next one, whatever the next one may be. So just ask questions and maybe you'll know what the next one may be. That's all I can tell you there. Man, this thing squeaks. Is that the, let me make sure that's not. No, it ain't me, it's gotta be the stool. I'm gonna fix that right now. <laughs>